What's up, everybody? Today we're here with another Spotlight series on James Hetfield. Now, James was born August 3rd, 1963 in uh, California in a town called Downey, California. Sorry, I had to look at my notes. My memory is about that long. It just is what it is. But anyway, uh, James obviously is the uh, rhythm guitar player and lyricist and main songwriter in Metallica. Now, I don't know about you, but as a kid, Metallica was a big influence on me. My teenage years and most everything I learned about the guitar during that time was because of him. Uh, his riffs just really were always cool sounding to me. They were, they were real aggressive, you know, lots of down picking and lots of, you know, gallopy. <laughs> stuff like that. Now James has a pretty unique style. Um, I play a lot of his riffs a little bit different than he does. Everything he plays is down picked just about except the gallop stuff. Um, he holds his pick a little different. I hold my pick like this like most guitar players do. James holds his pick with three fingers kind of like that. It's a little bit strange but I guess it makes him faster or whatever. But that dude can down pick like a mother effer. He's really, really good at it, and there's some stuff that's just too fast for me to play. Um, one of the songs that they do, Creeping Death, uh, which was off of Ride the Lightning, I do believe, they didn't play it live for a long, long time because it was just too fast to play, and the, the vocals and him playing just didn't line up. But he's gotten, gotten pretty good at it over the years, so that, that song is now in their, in their live set list. Um, James never intended to be the singer for Metallica. He kind of sang out of necessity. They didn't have another singer, and it just developed into a permanent thing, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. I um, want to talk about some of his riffs. We're going to talk, you know, there's going to be more than part one part of this video. I can tell you that. There's probably going to be two, maybe even three. Um, he's got a ton of riffs that were really cool and catchy, and... We're just going to do a couple parts about the riff master, James Hetfield. Now, the first album that I ever heard from Metallica was um, Kill 'Em All. Everybody heard Kill 'Em All first. Um, that was their big debut release. They did have some stuff recorded before that, like a demo, uh, things like that. Uh, Dave Mustaine was a member of Metallica until they got you know, to New York uh, to do the recording for Ride the Lightning. And in the truck, as Dave was sleeping in the back of the truck, they were up front in the truck planning his exit. Um, he was just a, a troublemaker and an alcoholic, and it's pretty bad when James Hetfield and the rest of Metallica thinks you drink too much. So it must have been pretty crazy. I can only imagine some of the stuff that happened back in those days. There's pretty crazy stories out there. But anyway, let's dive right into the riffs. The first one we're going to talk about is Seek and Destroy. That's everybody's first Metallica song they learn. I know it was mine, and it's off of Kill 'Em All, and it goes something like this. <laughs> first one I ever learned. Uh, I remember the, the hometown I lived in, Franklin, Pennsylvania, which isn't far from here. There was one kid in town that could play that riff, and I remember me and a bunch of my buddies chasing them all over town. Um, one of my friends even paid him a few bucks to show him that riff, but I think he was the first one that ever showed us any of those riffs, and uh, we just kind of took it from there. But anytime I heard new Metallica back in those days, I wanted to learn it. Now, some of it was a little bit beyond my skill at the time, but it just really influenced the way I play. I still lean towards the heavy stuff. And, um, you know, I've always been a Metallica fan. And his father, James's father, was a truck driver. Um, I guess he was also an alcoholic and fairly abusive from what I understand. Uh, his mother was actually a classically trained light opera singer. Uh, he was really close with his mother. She ended up passing away um, of cancer, I do believe. And I don't remember what year it was, but I know they wrote a song about it uh, later on in, in, in Metallica's career called The God That Failed. Uh, they were pretty stout Christians, and as part of their beliefs, they wouldn't accept any medical treatment for her 
even being diagnosed with cancer, which is pretty crazy. Um, somebody having that kind of faith in something like that to heal a sickness such as cancer to me is just absolutely insane. We're not going to get into too many religious beliefs today. We're talking about Metallica. So anyway, the next song I want to talk about, the, probably the next one I learned off of Kill 'Em All, uh, was No Remorse. It goes like this. <laughs> No, it doesn't. It goes like this. another tune on there, Jump in the Fire. Now that was, there's speculation about that song. Hetfield says he wrote it. Mustaine says he wrote it. I don't really care. It's a good tune. It goes like this. Yeah, that's a screw up, huh? It goes like this. today. My hand's going numb. I've been having some trouble with it. You probably heard me mention it in a few of my other videos. Um, so I'm going to blame all the mistakes on my bum hand. But anyway, moving right along like we do. The next album they, they came out with was called Ride the Lightning. Uh, now Ride the Lightning has some killer songs on that you just don't hear about it too much anymore. Uh, that was a really popular album when it came out. And in about sixth grade, uh, when Cliff Burton, who was their not their original bass player, but their second bass player. Uh, when he passed away in the bus accident in 1986, I remember, I remember telling people at school like, "Holy cow! Did you hear Cliff Burton died?" And they're all like, "Who's that?" You know, only me and a, a small group of my friends even knew who they were at the time. Uh, maybe we were ahead of our time. Maybe we were just a little bit crazy. Maybe we were just metalheads. Regardless, there were some good tunes off that one too. Um, the first one I want to talk about is Fade to Black. Now it's got an acoustic beginning. Um, it's a clean, clean riff, but there's some cool riffs in the song uh, that go like this. <laughs> There's a lot of good songs on that album. Ride the Lightning was much better produced uh, than Kill 'Em All. Captured more of the early thrash metal sound with a better production value, in my opinion. Uh, it sounded a little bit better. Now, Creeping Death, I mentioned that earlier about a song, uh, about the song, that they didn't play it in their early, early years live because it was just too fast for James to sing and play. Um, but they do now, and there's a, the, the fast part I was talking about goes like this. It's fast. 
class. To try and do that and sing, I couldn't even, couldn't even attempt it. Not without losing body parts and hurting myself, mentally and physically. But anyway, it's a cool tune. Uh, I always liked the song. And in my jukebox and my radios and ghetto blasters, whatever you want to call them, during the mid-80s, there was always a Metallica cassette close by, because, like I said, they were a big influence on, on me as a budding guitar player at the time. And uh, they just, I always liked the, the sound, you know, the heavy down pick riffs and stuff like that. Now, their earlier career, um, all their stuff was recorded in E standard, uh, but later on they did start dropping tuning a little bit. I think they dropped a half a step, uh, but most of their early stuff's always E standard for the most part. Um, and we're going to move right along to another riff. Right after I tell you that Metallica started in 1981 uh, when James met Lars Ulrich. He added his, or he responded to his ad in a, a newspaper in San Francisco called The Recycler. Um, or no, it wasn't San Francisco, it was L.A., sorry. The Recycler was a newspaper where you could put ads, you know, drummer seeking guitar player or whatever. And James responded to an ad now, when he showed up, they jammed a little bit, and James was just generally unimpressed. Uh, there was reports that Lars Ulrich's cymbals kept falling over, and he just wasn't a very good drummer. A lot of people say he's still not a good drummer, but he definitely fits the Metallica sound for sure. Uh, James actually came back to jam with them after Lars had secured a spot on the Metal Massacre album, which was a compilation album in the early 80s, and they secured a spot for a song on there before they even had a band to play. That's pretty cool. And it was Lars's connections in the, the music industry um, that, that led them to get the places that they got. Anyway, moving right along, the next album I want to talk about. Now, many, many consider this album their quintessential masterpiece. Master of Puppets is a fantastic guitar album. Uh, if you like heavy guitar riffs, there's not a doubt in my mind that you like the Master of Puppets album. It's, it's, it's a great album. And lots of good, good uh, guitar riffs on there. And the title track goes like this. It's all down picked, and he's just a monster when it comes to you know killer guitar riffs like that. Uh, the next song I want to talk about off that album is Orion. Um, Orion's a killer song, uh, real heavy. It goes a little something like this. <laughs> It's my favorite part of the whole whole song. It's a riff that uh, he goes out of this. Into this. song. Uh, the production on Master Puppets was fantastic. Uh, they had a really good high-end production and the whole album is just kick-ass from start to finish. If you've never heard it, do yourself a favor, man. Go check out Master Puppets. And while we're talking about it, 
I want to thank and welcome all my new subscribers. I've had a few the last couple days that decided to, to join, and I really, really appreciate you guys signing up. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you checking out my channel and watching my content. It means a lot to me. And while you're at it, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's down there in the bottom corner of the video, right down there. Throw me a thumbs up. Throw me a like. Say hi in the comments. Love to hear from every one of you. If you're watching this video, take a few seconds and say something. Appreciate you all checking it out. Back to James Hetfield. Uh, the next song I want to talk about is uh, Welcome Home Sanitarium. Now, the intro to that is is a clean intro so I need to change some things give me just a second song's got a mix of real heavy riffs and you know like I said a, a clean intro as you can hear I used a lot of harmonics always kind of grabbed my ear and made me dig the album a little bit more um, now that song there's a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of you know time changes and riff changes in that song um, and the Courses go like this. Good tune right there. Love it. Always been one of my favorite Metallica songs. Now, James had a couple of bands before Metallica. Uh, one of them was called Leather Charm. I believe that was his first band. And his second band was called Obsession, where he actually played with Ron McGovney, who was Metallica's original bass player prior to Cliff Burton. Uh, now, Dave Mustaine used to harass the shit out of Ron McGovney. He got mad at him one time and dumped a beer all over the front of his, his uh, bass guitar, uh, effectively frying the pickups. And th them, them guys were just always you know, fighting and scrapping with one another. And you just can't have two alpha personalities in a band like that. That's why James and Dave had to go their separate ways. And for one, I'm really glad they did uh, because we wouldn't have Megadeth, you know, and I'm a big Megadeth fan also. Love Dave Mustaine and all the stuff he's done with Megadeth. And I do like Metallica. A lot of people fell off the Metallica wagon uh, back in the mid nineties when they did, you know, the Black Album, it was okay. There's some good songs on there. Um, but the Black Album for me was the last good Metallica album until years later when I listened to Load and Reload. I love those albums. A lot of people hate them because they cut their hair and started wearing fingernail polish and stuff. But I'll tell you what, those albums are great. There's some really, really cool riffs on that album. Uh, one's a little better than the other, and I can't remember which one I like more. But they're both really cool albums. Um, diversified their sound a little bit. There's, you know, some country influences on there. A little bit of everything. Uh, a couple of cool covers on those albums. I dig Load and Reload. Now, St. Anger, sorry guys, I hated St. Anger. Uh, the drums, it just, it sounded like they were all plugged into a big-ass bowl of oatmeal, and it just wasn't my thing. I hated that album. The drums sounded like the heads weren't tight enough. It just sounded bad. I didn't like it at all. But in 2008, uh, they come out with Death Magnetic. 
That was an awesome album. It was a killer return to their original thrash metal roots. And if you haven't heard that album, Death Magnetic, go listen to it now. There's some killer stuff on that record. Uh, I actually like that more than the, the stuff they've done after it. Now, Hardwired to Self Destruct's okay, but I think Death Magnetic was a better album, truer to the original Metallica sound, in my opinion. Anyway, um, after Master Puppets, uh, they did. Um, they did an album called Injustice for All. Now, Injustice for All, a lot of people complained about because you couldn't hear Jason Newstead's bass. Jason Newstead was the replacement for Cliff Burton when he died in the accident in the bus. Um, and you just couldn't hear the bass in that album. Uh, they say it was, you know, just the way it was mixed, yada, yada, yada. You can't hear any bass on that album at all. But it's a great album nonetheless with some really cool riffs on there. One of my favorites is Short of Straw. It goes like this. <laughs> I gotta move my monitor here. It is vibrating against my window and making a hell of a vibration. I just realized it. Sorry if you can hear it. And if you listen, my neighbors decided to mow the grass. Seems like every time I film a video, they mow the yard. You'll have that, I guess, in the summertime. There's nothing like adult peer pressure than your neighbors mowing the grass. They mow their grass, and yours looks like hell, and you gotta go out and mow it. So, guess what I'm gonna be doing soon? Mowing grass. Anyway, back to Injustice for All. Um, some cool songs on there. Shortest Straw is a great one. Harvester of Sorrow is another good one. Those two are probably my favorite off that album. And Harvester of Sorrow goes like this. <laughs> Harvester of Sorrow is probably my favorite off that album. Shortest Straw is a close second. Love that tune also. Um, something else I wanted to mention. James is a huge, huge classic car buff. He's got a great big collection of classic cars and some motorcycles actually. And he's very mechanically inclined. He works on a lot of them himself. Uh, maybe all of them. I think he's built a lot of them himself. And he's got some really, really cool stuff. Uh, he's kind of a grease monkey. He also likes to hunt and fish. And he's a big outdoorsman, and he's also a member of the NRA. Support the Second Amendment, everybody, because it is important. But moving right along, um, something I mentioned in my Jimmy Page video. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. But there's a riff that everybody misplays for Metallica also. And I'm going to clear that up right now. It's the song that everybody loves to hate, Enter Sandman. And it's the clean beginning that everybody plays incorrectly. Well, most people. Um, and just like the Jimmy Page riff, I played this wrong for years and years. A lot of people play it like this. Same notes. The notes are correct, but um, it's actually played like this. Nope, it's played like this. lets it ring out instead of hitting the D string on the fifth fret. So the G string rings out through the whole riff. Just one of them little things that 
it makes a big difference when you play it the correct way it actually sounds a lot more like what they're doing now if somebody plays it you know the other way nobody's probably even going to notice but little things like that always catch my attention i just wanted to point that out to you because hey why not right but anyway back to the riffs now a lot of something that not many people know about james he actually plays guitar solos too uh, not a bunch of them but he does do some solo work and my favorite solo that he does is in nothing else matters i'm going to see how bad i can screw this up don't get too mad if it takes me three or four times to get it right but it goes like this <laughs> enough right James actually plays that solo and you can tell because it's not overly wad like Kirk Hammett uses the wah pedal on everything now I'm not throwing any shade in Kirk's direction he's a great guitar player also but in my opinion he uses the wah pedal a little bit too much but anyway guys that's it thanks for watching part one of the James Hetfield player spotlight series there will be a part two coming soon thanks for watching Appreciate y'all. Have a good day. Until next time, see ya!